Hello everybody. Today I'm going to read you a story from the past about a dystopian future which is now in many ways a dystopian present. This story is called The Fun They Had by Isaac Asimov. It was published in 1951. Margie even wrote about it that night in her diary. On the page headed May 17th 2157 she wrote, Today Tommy found a real book. It was a very old book. Margie's grandfather once said that when he was a little boy, his grandfather told him that there was a time when all stories were printed on paper. They turned the pages which were yellow and crinkly. And it was awfully funny to read words that stood still instead of moving the way they were supposed to, on a screen, you know. And then, when they turned back to the page before, it had the same words written on it that it had when they read it the first time. Gee, said Tommy, what a waste. When you're through with the book, I guess you just throw it away. Our television screen must have, had, must have had a million books on it, and it's still good for more. I wouldn't throw that away. Same with mine, said Margie. She was 11 and hadn't seen as many telly books as Tommy had. He was 13. She said, where did you find it? In my house, he pointed without looking, because he was busy reading. In the attic. What's it about? School. Margie was scornful. School? What's there to write about school? I hate school. Margie always hated school, but now she hated it more than ever. The mechanical teacher had been giving her test after test in geography, and she'd been doing worse and worse until her mother had shaken her head sorrowfully and sent for the county inspector. He was a round little man with a red face and a whole box of tools with dials and wires. He smiled at Margie and gave her an apple, then took the teacher apart. Margie had hoped he wouldn't know how to put it back together again, but he knew all right, and after an hour or so, there it was again, large and black and ugly, with a big screen on which all the lessons were shown and the questions were asked. That wasn't so bad. The part Margie hated the most was the slot where she had to put her homework and test papers. She always had to write them out on punch code that they made her learn when she was six, and the mechanical teacher calculated the mark in no time. The inspector had smiled after he was finished and patted Margie's head. He said to her mother, It's not the little girl's fault, Mrs Jones. I think the geography sector was geared a little too quick. Those things happen sometimes. I've slowed it up to average 10 year old level. Actually, the overall pattern of her progress is quite satisfactory. And he patted Margie's head again. Margie was disappointed. She'd been hoping they'd take the teacher away altogether. They'd once taken Tommy's teacher away for nearly a month because the history sector had blanked out entirely. So she said to Tommy, why would anyone write about school anyway? Tommy looked at her with very superior eyes. Because it's not our kind of school, stupid. This is the old kind of school where they had they had hundreds and hundreds of years ago. He added loftily, pronouncing the word carefully. Centuries ago. Margie was hurt. Well, I don't know what kind of school they had all that time ago. She read the book over his shoulder for a while, then said, Anyway, they had a teacher. Well, sure they had a teacher, but it wasn't a regular teacher. It was a man. A man? How could a man be a teacher? Well, he just told the boys and girls things and gave them homework and asked them questions. A man isn't smart enough. Sure he is. My father knows as much as my teacher. He can't. A man can't know as much as a teacher. He knows almost as much, I betcha. Margie wasn't prepared to dispute that. She said, I wouldn't want a strange man in my house to teach me. Tommy screamed with laughter. You don't know much, Margie. The teachers didn't live in the house. They had a special building where all the kids went. And all the kids learnt the same thing. Sure, if they were the same age. But my mother says a teacher has to be adjusted to fit the mind of each boy and girl it teaches, and that each kid has to be taught differently. Just the same, they didn't do it that way then. If you don't like it, you don't have to read the book. I didn't say I didn't like it, Margie said quickly. She wanted to read about those funny schools. They weren't even half finished when Margie's mother called, Margie, school! Margie looked up. Not yet, Mama! Now, said Mrs Jones, and it's probably time for Tommy too. Margie said to Tommy, Can I read the book some more with you after school? Maybe, he said nonchalantly. He walked away whistling, the dusty old book tucked beneath his arm. Margie went into the schoolroom. It was right next to her bedroom, and the mechanical teacher was on and waiting for her. 
It was always on at the same time every day, except Saturday and Sunday, because her mother said that little girls learned better if they learned in regular hours. The screen was lit up, and it said, Today's arithmetic lesson is on the addition of proper fractions. Please insert yesterday's homework in the proper slot. Margie did so with a sigh. She was thinking about the old schools they had when her grandfather's grandfather was a little boy. All the kids from the whole neighbourhood came, laughing and shouting in the schoolyard, sitting together in the schoolroom, going home together at the end of the day. They learnt the same things so they could help one another on their homework and talk about it. And the teachers were people. The mechanical teacher was flashing on the screen. When we add the fractions half and one quarter, Margie was thinking about how kids must have loved school in the old days. She was thinking about the fun they had. Thank you. They turned the pages, which were yellow and crinkly, and it was awfully funny to read words that stood still instead of the way they were moving the way they were supposed to on a screen, you know. And then when they turned back to the page before, power cut. <laughs>